weeks, we're doing a little show um, between 10 and 15 minutes where we're just talking about the mobile computing lifestyle, the network lifestyle, telling people also a little bit about Taiwan because uh, it's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, everybody knows made in Taiwan, but no one knows about it. Uh, when I'm asking someone in the US, for example, tell me the capital of Taiwan, they're telling me Bangkok. Right? <laughs> so it's, uh, you have to educate them a little bit. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying my very best. Um, so um, what, I, what I would like to show you, I mean, we have a lot of technical uh, uh, talk going on and some really, really interesting projects. And uh, I would like to give you a little roundup uh, about network, uh, where network really are coming from and how they're developing uh, in the next uh, uh, couple of years. Not in the next couple of years, but let's say in the next two years. So I will give you my personal definition on networks. Uh, we will take a look at the development and a look at the upcoming markets. So um, I have to say that I'm absolutely staying with the limitation that Intel is putting on the market because Intel is telling all the, uh, the audience and the manufacturers over here in Taiwan, hey, if you want to buy our Intel Atom CPU, uh, the N270, that's a diamond wood core, make sure that you're matching these limitations. That means your device can't be bigger than 10.2 uh, inch. There are some manufacturers, Lenovo and Samsung, uh, who weren't caring about this, and therefore they got kicked out of the Intel subsidized program for the Intel Atom, so they have to pay a higher price right now because they were using the Intel Atom uh, N270 and N280 in devices above 10.2 inch, 11.6, and uh, now Lenovo comes out with the uh, Lenovo IdeaPad S12, which is a 12 inch system, but still using the Intel Atom N270. So I think uh, to define a network, it needs to have between 7 and 2 inch, uh, 7 and 10.2 inch display, uh, maximum of uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM. Um, I still believe that networks are the main carrier for the penetration of solid state drives onto the consumer market. I mean, the first EPC was based uh, or, uh, was based on an SSD, it was a 4 gigabyte SSD in the EPC 4G uh, back in 2007. So, but you still, right now, we see it evolving. Um, more and more uh, manufacturers are coming out with networks, putting big 2.5-inch harkers in there, up to 250 <coughs> gigabytes right now. Uh, three to six cell battery. Six cell battery, um, forget about three cell battery, even though that a lot of uh, manufacturers are still selling our networks with three cell batteries. But uh, I, I did a survey on my side, about 2,000 people, 3,000 people were participating in this, and people are really, really looking for long battery life. Uh, in the network, so six or battery, something between seven, eight, nine hours, uh, is kind of becoming a standard on the market. So uh, when it comes again uh, to the form factor, 800 uh, to 1400 uh, grams, so lightweight. I mean, it's a huge difference when you're carrying around uh, all along. You're carrying around a three kilogram device or a device that only weighs a kilogram. And of course, the price point. That's why networks really, really became popular. Um, 200 to 600 dollars. We already see devices right now. First generation Acer Aspire One, or first generation of the EPC is getting sold in the US like also 200 dollars. So in Europe it's like uh, 150 euros. So really, really very cheap. And that was also, of course, one of the main advantages of these devices, and that's why they were so successful. So to give you a little idea, um, what what what. what was pretty much the first platform of where it all started. It was this uh, CPU over here, the AMD Geode. Um, of course, due to the old PC project, it was kind of um, um, the start of all 